Articulation is a field of linguistics that may seem a bit more medical than you may have expected. But before we actually start doing science with sounds, it's important to see how we make those sounds. And articulation is the field of phonetics that investigates how we use our bodies to produce the sounds that later become speech. What organs do we use and how do we use them? And how can we make the creepiest possible drawings and animations to show that? Linguistics knows an answer to all of those questions. Many people think that speaking is done with a tongue. In many languages, such as Spanish, Russian and Poetic German, tongue and language even share a word. Historically, blasphemers and liars had their tongues removed to stop them from speaking. And that certainly works pretty well, although we haven't conducted any empirical research on that. The Ethics Commission just wouldn't have it. But while the tongue is very, very important for speaking, there are many other parts of our body that we need. An obvious candidate are the lips, for all your B's and P's and M's. The teeth are also used sometimes, and the whole roof of the mouth. That's actually made up of three parts. The gum ridge or alveolar ridge is the first one, it's right behind the teeth. You can also call it the pizza ridge, because that's the part of your mouth that you burn when you bite into hot pizza. Behind that is the hard palate, and behind that is the soft palate, or velum. All of those parts of the mouth, apart from the lips, work together with the tongue. The tongue limits or stops the airflow at them to produce, for example, a t, a sh, or a g. Behind the velum, there's the uvula. Yes, some weird sounds even use that thing, for example the German r. Behind that, on the edge between your mouth and your throat, is the pharynx, followed by the epiglottis and the glottis, that's the gap between the vocal folds, and finally the larynx, which is around where the Adam's apple is. All of those also can become obstacles to the airflow, because they are all movable. No need for a tongue. And as if that weren't enough, there's also the nasal cavity, which we use for sounds like n, m, mm, and nasal vowels. Those, by the way, are what makes French speakers sound like they continuously have a cold. For those nasal sounds, the velum opens the path to the nasal cavity, allowing air to flow through. And then you find out that the tongue has three parts. The tip, the blade and the back. God damn it, linguistics. The good news is that we don't need all of those names for English. The bad news is that we need most of them. You use everything but the pharynx, epiglottis and larynx to speak English. Sorry about that. And there's actually one more body part that you really, really need to produce speech sounds. The lungs. Because all our sounds are made by releasing a little bit of air from our mouths in some way. Also, you need to be alive to speak. So lungs really matter. For us to produce speech, the air flowing through the mouth and throat must be obstructed in some way. Otherwise, it would just be breathing. For vowels, this is only done in the glottis, which opens and closes rapidly, creating vibrations and thus sound waves. For consonants, with one small exception, there must also be an obstruction further up the vocal tract, for example in the mouth. These obstructions can be partial, for example for a f or sh, or they can be complete and then quickly released, for example for a b or k. We will have a closer look at how we produce consonants and vowels in dedicated episodes. To be honest, this isn't information that's great to transport in a video. Much better to have a look at those creepy diagrams. So in our recap, we'll just advise you to look at some of those diagrams and animations. We'll provide some links in the video description.